guys right now? I'm okay. I'm smooth. All right. You're okay. Okay. And then that uh, recording just popped on. So you have to clear, uh, clear the box. And actually, I'm going I'm to check something here. Mm -hmm. Looks like I lost. Okay, there you are. Screen participants. Okay. Anyway, it looks like the internet might be weird today, just kind of in and out, hopefully not too bad. You seem to be uh, frozen. I mean, find we can hear your comfortable seat. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got chair facing in, chair facing in. And sitting, uh, looks like you just unmuted yourself on the Wade Green. I'll, I'll mute you. Don't worry about it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, let me do it. Because I, I can just mute all, all at once. Okay. So we're, again, the key to this class, particularly, is this setup where you have uh, something on this side of you, something on this side of you, and you can stand in the middle and work back and forth, okay? So have that set up, a seat, and then a support on this side and a support on that side with enough room here, decent amount of room. Now, uh, sitting at the front edge of your chair, buttocks going down through the chair, crown up top, <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> so these three important ideas that that uh, we're at we're engaging with uh, these underlying energetic uh, states that we want to be in. So the wrong state to be in is the whole body grabbed on with tension, trying to hold us upright. What that does is keeps us from actually being grounded and supported at the bottom, kind of like if you let uh, all the sand or sediment settle down to the bottom and what's left up top is very light and adaptable, but that yet there's a stability in the bottom. That's what we want to achieve in our body on an energetic uh, level, right? And so that's usually not what's going on. So when we're sitting, that's a, a simple way to just get yourself in the right frame of mind. So you do what's called Zhong Zhong, or you attend to your central pillar, central upright pillar. Once that's intact, then you practice the Chun one or the softening into stability. So as best you can, relax, release, and soften. Don't hold yourself up and notice that you don't fall over. In fact, you get more stability. And then the response to that is, uh, the third piece is Qing Ling, which means light, nimble, and adaptable. So we've got our central pillar. We soften out any excess tension and release it. Then there's a, a grounding, settling uh, quality down the bottom, chun one. And then what's left is light and nimble uh, uh, and agile bottom. Inhale and exhale through the nose a few times. Just to get your mind brought in from anywhere it might be wandering. <clears throat> So simple meditation that you can do before you're about to head off is go Jong Jong, Chun Wang, softening into stability, Ching Ling, feel light, feel nimble, feel agile.
another two, three, four breaths, just getting our general sort of calibration. <clears throat> And the other piece to this is we have tension and resistance in the body that is so habitual and it's sort of ingrained that we need to try to work it out, soften it out. So that's where these first movements come in. So your first movement, elbows back, hands back, shoulder blades back, chest and chin up, arching backwards, right? So nice gentle back bend. And then the opposite, hands forward, chest hollows back, drop your head and round. Do that again. Slide the hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back, arch. Slide hands forward, hollow the chest back, drop the head. <clears throat> Two more. And we're only gonna do four of each of these. If you were on your own practicing and you had a lot of stiffness through your torso, you might do 10, 12 of these movements. You might hold the position where you feel like you're really stretching something that's uh, some residual tension, some deep seated rigidity, you know? So the, the personal practice, this, these classes that I'm recording, they're sort of like a, a compendium of practices but in your own home practice, you would do as many as, need, as uh, you need of each of these, right? The other piece that we're looking at here is I wouldn't want to walk around all day like this, nor would I want to rock or walk around all day like this. So these aren't shapes that we want to live our lives stuck in, but we do need for a healthy body to be able to make this shape and make this shape. Because now as you settle back to your middle, back to that middle position, you might notice, and over time you would notice, it's easier to find this middle now. Now you've calibrated, you've sort of opened up the middle space for yourself, where at first we were sort of here, kind of stuck. Now that we've moved, now our body calibrates and finds middle easier. Same thing applies here as we do rotations, left hand forward, right hand and elbow back. As you do that, turn, rotate, <clears throat> look over the shoulder. And then again, you got to go all the way around to the other side. So over time through practice, the goal would be to have no impediment, no hindrance to going all the way left and all the way right. What you will normally run into is, uh, are the places in your body that are out of whack, out of balance, right? You might feel free to move to the right, but when you go to your left, you run into something. You go, oh, what is that? And <clears throat> little by little, you polish those out so that your body has this, that ching ling, that free, nimble, floating, flowing, sliding, Gliding, right? So we have to remove this deep rust and tension. Last one to each side. We're moving in the rotational plane. Just turning and turning. Now come back to middle again and do the same thing I uh, was pointing out in the previous exercise. Just feel your center, feel your middle. Notice, are you able to calibrate it that much more precisely, but also easily right your body just naturally is like oh yeah this is the middle once you've explored the ranges of the movement so now let's do the sideways movement on that drop the arms we lean sideways lift your left wrist and i'll turn sideways so you can see i'm not doing anything major i'm just floating it up right in this little pocket this little space here and leaning and almost trying to touch the floor a little bit and then change, go all the way across so that we're opening up this range. <clears throat> and then we come all the way across. You might even add, if you get yourself really grounded through this right buttock, 
your left foot feels ching ling, feels light, feels nimble. And then we come across and you feel that chung one, we're softening down to stable down here. And this is ching ling, it's light. And yet we're still balanced. We still have a middle pivot, right? So again, this free and loose quality doesn't uh, uh, put at risk our stability. That's the goal. Those two sort of mobility and stability concepts, we're finding this perfect balance of both, totally loose and free while still having that grounded, stable, controlled state. Last one. Now come back to middle, hands on your thighs, and once again, just calibrate here. Feel middle. We went forward and back, we went rotating, and we went side to side to help us find that zhong zhong, that central pillar that we wanna be very aware of uh, and keep intact. Now, <clears throat> let's do our shoulder blade work. So arms hang, shoulders rise up and melt down. Rise straight up and melt down. Same idea that we're trying to unpack whatever might be stuck in the upper back, the chest, the shoulders, the arms, the neck this whole chassis up here. Now let's do the circle forward up, stay up as you go back, stay back as you come down, stay down and under as you come forward, stay forward as you lift up over the top, come back, stay back as you slide down, stay down as you come under and up, Stay up as you go over the top, back. Stay back as you come down and soft and loose. One more. <clears throat> and under. And then let's reverse. Go back, up. Stay up as you come forward. Stay forward as you slide down. Stay down as you come under and back. Stay back as you come up. Stay up as you come over. Let's do a few more. Again, just like you would clean some, uh, you would polish uh, some varnish. I don't think that's the right word, but whatever, whatever that's that's on metal or something, right? This this sort of residue that gets accumulated, and we want to polish it off. That's what we're doing on the interior of the body. We're polishing out anything that isn't flowing, supple smooth. That's the goal in Taoist uh, practices. Now, <clears throat> bend your elbows, bring the hands up. We go elbows out and up. This is just, to, again, clear a little more of that tension out. Elbows down. We go elbows around in front and touch in front. Let's do one more of those. Again, you might do five of these. If when you make this shape, you're like, oh, there's something stiff in the chest. You might lean and tilt and work the kinks out. And then you come around in front and squeeze and open up your back. Now we go elbows back, down, forward, and possibly up. And then elbows forward, down, and back. Elbows down, forward, up. Forward, down, back. And then finally here, elbows out, palms face the floor, one above, one below. Close in front and hug your own body. And then elbows go out to the side, feel this opening. And then the other one above, other below, close, hug your body. And open. One more of each. Close. <clears throat> open, close, and open, down, and release. Now we swing, 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 loose, 
loose. Notice you don't have to grab onto your arms and shoulders. Your arms won't fall off. You can really let this area be light and empty and spacious and right, soft, right? And when we loosen up what's stuck here, what is happening is it's descending down that Chun one quality. So instead of us looking for stability up here, we're actually saying, okay, I'm going to let that go and I'm going to let myself settle and ground and connect to the earth, right? Now, <clears throat> scoot back a little bit. We also want to let that keep going through. And sometimes there's stuck energy in the hips and legs and down through the ankles and feet. So bring your right knee up and bring the heel in. So you're loading this up like a spring that's compressing and then push and then reload it, set it down, switch legs, load, push, reload, set it down, load, so it's compressed, push, go all the way full range, reload all the way to the full range, and then set it down. So again, the health of this leg, part of what is, makes it healthy is its freedom to change to go all the way to one end of the spectrum all the way to the other all the way back without hindrance without you know stuck spots and, and hurdles and impediments and then that same idea applies to the foot and ankle so put your right foot out point the foot completely flex the foot completely point flex so again you're looking for what impediments what tissue barnacles and stuck areas and rust impede you from full range. Then this invert, evert, invert, so tilt of the foot. <clears throat> and then the circle, which is again, just the, uh, the uh, maximum range. This is what the foot is built to do. We're not asking it to do anything it's not intended to do. Let's go the other way. But that's where a lot of people find themselves with their body is that the body's joints and tissue were built to do this kind of movement, but it's gotten to the place where it can't for this or that reason. So we're trying to bring that back to re that. Other foot, pointing, flexing, pointing, flexing. Just free movement, free movement. Now, invert, ebert. <clears throat> the other piece to this too is that you're using your brain through the nervous system let's go ahead and circle you're wiring your network connecting into your body when you go through your body with these range of motion exercises reverse you're not only making a positive change at the muscular level and the joint level but in the brain you're actually lighting up these areas of control, these motor centers, right? You're calibrating, you're helping to clear up the blurry body map and making it clear. Proprioception, right? This ability to sense where your body is. Go ahead and scoop forward to the front edge. And then the hips, again, are, are a somewhat complex joint area because they're ball and socket. They're built to roll and rotate. Right? Whereas the knee joint isn't built to do that. The knee joint's very simple. It just, it just hinges. So we got to make sure we open these hips and keep them flowing as well. So step a little wider, create this little uh, sort of bow-legged space. Now lift the toes, both feet, uh, fronts of feet off the floor. Turn on the heels, internally rotate. So notice knees come in, toes turn in, and the groin area is closed. Then lift those toes open as much as you can and feel that opening from here. This is where we need to free up and then close all the way close. So the healthy hips, healthy leg hip relationship is one where this is unimpeded. Usually when we come out here, you might feel, oh, there's a little tightness in there, a little stretch happening somewhere. But over time, this all gets polished and free and loose, but not loose in a way that's disconnected, loose in a way that is more connected. 
and back to neutral. Bring the legs back to hip distance. Now, from that same place where the legs meet the pelvis, forward fold. So we just hinge at the hips and bow. And then we sit upright. From that same place in the hips, lean back a little bit. Just kind of tip back and then sit upright. So again, we're finding this full free range, unimpeded movement, soft and relaxed body. <clears throat> One more. and find middle. Now to stand up, we're gonna use everything we just did. Arms and chest loose and light. So we're not gonna get all stiff up here and try to push to get up, which is how most people do it. They grab something where they push into their chair to try to stand up, right? Instead, drop your arms and be very loose. Slide your feet back a little bit so there's a slightly acute angle here. Fold from the hips and let your body weight pour out of the chair down through your legs to the floor and then just stand up. Now get all the way vertical, but again, notice a lot of times as soon as we get maybe about here, we go back to relying on our arms and shoulders. We sort of tighten up up here. Try to, try to really feel like you can let all that go and let it descend. Let the sediment, let the groundedness, don't fight being grounded and plugged into the earth. Now stay plugged into the earth and stay light and loose in the body so that to sit down, all you do is just easily fold in half. Then you sink the butt and that's why the knees bend. You find your chair with your butt and then you let the body weight go into the chair. Now the feet are light, right? Because I'm using the chair to connect me to the earth. But now I want to pour out of the chair, <clears throat> down the legs to the earth, and now I'm letting my body weight go down through the legs and connect that way. And then we sit, fold and sink, body stays loose. And again, just loose, let it be easy. Consider it might be easy. And especially with Parkinson's, you might have to. You might be forced to find this ease in order to remain functional as the, the issues in the nervous system are just right there. It's like there's a fragility, right, in the nervous system where anything, you know, the phone rings and all of a sudden it's, it, it, there's a stuck quality. So you have to find this Tai Chi, this loose, this soft, and then you can remain quite functional. Now, Let's do the squats where you don't sit in your chair. You just hinge at the hips a little bit. So just find that and then sink the butt like you're going to uh, sit to the chair. But let this be your arms dangling down, maybe even touch your toes. See if you can even touch the floor. And then push through the earth and rise back up. Rise all the way up. Standing all the way up. Stand up. Oh, there you go. Sorry, I, it, there was a glitch. I couldn't see if uh, you were standing up. Okay, folding, again, arms loose, very loose, and then just fold at the hips. Also notice this opens up your lumbar spine, your lower back. <clears throat> and that's a really important area. Go ahead and stand back up. That lumbar spine area, this is a common place for back pain. And they call this the Ming Men, or the gate of life, the gate of life in the body, according to the Taoist view. And what they say is what happens is this freezes and gets stuck. And so this movement, this Tai Chi squat, when you sit the butt and let your arms stay loose, notice how that's an opportunity to open your Ming Men and then push through the earth and stand. And so this becomes a Chi pump or a life force pump opening your Ming Men and sending life force through the body. Sink, open that Ming Men up, open the gate of life, and then rise. 
All right. Now, stay standing. Stay loose, as loose as you can. And notice how you're using two legs to get to the earth. Uh, chun wanting, right? And so hopefully you're feeling pretty ching ling and loose and you're chun wanting down through the legs, down through the earth. Now let's shift so that only one leg is being your chun one or your, your down to the earth leg and the other leg is less so. It's empty. It's not underweight. So we have full, empty, and then change. So now it's this side, and then change. Now the most important part of this is this idea that the navel, the belly button, which is also the lower back, that level of the body, that's where our middle pivot is. That's where we wanna move from. So you can look up top and note that I'm not doing anything like this. A lot of times people are frozen here, and to get to that leg, they lean like this and notice how my middle isn't moving and I'm doing everything up here. And then I try to get over here and I'm resisting the most important part, which is the movement from your middle to this side and the movement from here, from your middle to this side. And when you're relaxed and released, this can feel really casual. It can feel just like you're kind of moseying in place. So this is like a basic Qigong practice that we're doing here, where I'm just trying to soften and loosen and relax my way to one full, one empty, and then just soften and loose, one full, one empty. Soften. And so this practice, it, you know, if you go to a party and you show someone this practice, they're not going to be impressed, right? It's not like a party trick, but the power, the potency of this practice, if you do it right, to keep the inner mechanism functioning, to open up where there's like some frozen stuck, what they call being double weighted. It's like a seesaw, picture a seesaw at a playground, but there's a bunch of gunk right on the middle pivot of the seesaw. It's stuck. It's not going to flow right. And that's kind of where we're at where this practice is loosening, loosening. Let's do it a little bit more and now consider this idea. The important thing is your legs are not wooden stilts. So as you go over onto your right leg, a lot of times we tighten everything up, we lock the knee back, we, 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 we resist in the leg to try to find stability. But what you wanna do is soften that leg. Let the leg, this leg, right? You notice, you see, I'm sort of able to do this little sink rise thing in the leg instead of holding on to that leg like a stilt, right? So soft. So keep the leg soft so that as you go down through it, that, that's where this freedom comes from, is the sitting through correctly. So here's our next exercise is you sink and see if you can just kind of float this foot out and touch the toe empty and then bring that foot back without any weight in it and then shift. So this is the cat stance practice, right? Because what this will show you is some of you, when you do it, as your foot goes out, since there's stiffness in the body, you pull your body weight with the foot and then you come back and then you change. And then because again, there's stiffness, as you try to step out, part of you is hold and then part of you comes back whereas if you notice mine i'm staying right where i am and able to float that foot out and it's that little bend in this leg that slightly sunk position that is the key to correct tai chi practice so you're retraining the joints and tissues to say oh that's the use that's the way this leg is supposed to be used is find that stability through mobility Suppleness. Last one. And find the middle. So, really important when you're out in the world and you're standing in line or you're waiting at the crosswalk, you know, uh, you don't want to get stuck at the crosswalk, right? So, don't, when you come up to that crosswalk, 
hold on to your body and stand there because then when it's time to walk, you're going to go up oh, and now you're fighting against, uh, you know, this wrong mechanic. So when you're waiting for something, do this little practice. It's very subtle. Nobody really notices it. You just kind of change left, change right, keep this loose quality, maybe even put the toe out there. This little cat stance, right? I'm sort of showing you how I do this all the time. It makes my back feel better. It keeps me feeling kind of flowy and loose. So just find ways during your life to just constantly be changing loose and free. Don't get stuck and frozen. All right. Now move closer to this chair. Hand could grab the chair if you need to. Shift the weight down through that left leg. And with the light quality here, get all the way up to your tippy toe. So notice I'm to the very tip of the toe and then lower that foot back down and change. Then get all the way to the tippy toe. Down, change. Loose. So not only is this the important practice for the chun one or the softening down through, but this mobility of the foot and ankle and knee. So notice how I'm, I'm pointing the foot. This might cause you a calf cramp, a foot cramp. You're bending the knee, you're deepening this hip. Change and get this mobility to get all the way up onto the tippy toe. It's almost like a jazz dance position, right? But again, it's just a functional movement we need to have freedom for. Now, put the weight down through the left, get to your tippy toe, this is where you might need your chair, disconnect the toe from the floor, bring the foot up. And then put the whole foot down without any body weight in it, then change the weight, get to that tippy tippy toe, disconnect from the floor. So that's, this is the proving ground. When you try to pick it up, what happens, right? Often a lot of chaos happens. Try to look for the stability that you're looking for. Look for it by softening down through the leg better. Let it get through there to the earth to create chingling, light, nimble. The middle pivot, chest, shoulders soft, head and neck loose. You're getting stability from the earth rather than from your effort, right? Which one is more sustainable, right? Us leveraging the stability of the earth is better and we got to loosen up to do that level three get to the tippy toe this is where you probably should use the chair so you can really practice what's the maximum range of lift like if you had to step up on the highest you know step or curve or boulder and then lower the leg all the way down completely no body weight from your middle pivot change tippy toe use chair as needed lift all the way, get to that maximum lift and see if you can keep your vertical jung jung, the soft and supple leg down. Change the weight, tippy toe. And again, can you let the body weight go down? The down creates the up, lower. Change from your middle pivot, change. Let the down, Create the safe lift of the leg, the quality of your down to the earth. Let's do one more each side. The down creates the freedom. So that saying in Tai Chi is one full, three empty. These are empty and light all the time, but then this is our full. So now this could be as free as an arm at some point. Okay, next exercise. Put the weight in your left leg, right foot is empty, put the heel out in front of you. If I turn sideways, you can see, not a massive step, just a small step. And now you'll shift and get to the tippy toe and then shift back and allow yourself to get up to the heel tip so it's empty. Shift. And shift. Now don't be fooled by the fact that we're moving forward and backward. The primary direction is still down. 
It's the down that allows this, and it's the down that moves me forward. So it's kind of like our feet are like wheels. They're like wheels, and it's the down that moves it forward, rather than a lot of times when I'm showing this, and I'm looking at people's walking there, we're sort of lurching forward and lurching back instead of relaxing and just going down and down. Now, again, it's this down that allows you the freedom to possibly lift, lower, down, and then this little flamingo, bend the knee, toe touch, down, from this hip, lift, lower, down to the earth. It's the down that allows that light quality for you to lift, lower, down to the earth. From the hip, down to the earth, the knee. Now, level three, this is where you probably should use the chair so that you can practice full range lift down, shift the weight, and then this back leg comes forward and up, full range, and reaches back without body weight. That's important. And then shift. Knee up, down, shift. Knee forward and up, toe reach back with no body weight, shift. So be very clear, where is your plug into the earth? Don't sacrifice that, don't fall out of it. So whether my knee is up or whether my toe is reached back, I'm still here, down through. And then now I'm down through so I can go up, down, and now I'm down through so I can go up. So it's that differentiation we gotta master. Bring your right foot next to your left foot, shift to your uh, uh, right foot, sidestep, and come across other chair, level one. So put the weight through your right leg, left foot out, heel touching lightly. Level one is rock, toe, get light, 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 rock, get light, and rock, light, rock. And again, don't be fooled. Yes, we're moving forward in space, but actually all we want to pay attention to is how correctly down through are we. That's what we need. Level two, stay down through that right leg so the left foot is ching ling, light, nimble. Place it down softly, then change. Be so down through your left leg that your right knee can bend. Ching ling, light and nimble. Chain, sitting that hip, loose, and then chain. So just highlighting that point I was mentioning in the beginning, a healthy body is the body capable of change, of transforming, of morphing, of changing modes, of going from, from hardened and toned to totally melted and soft as a baby. Being stuck in either of those all right, one is too weak, one is too tight, too strong. So morphing, changing. Let's go level three. Knee up, down. Soften down through that leg. Feel that light and nimble quality. The lighter, softer, more nimble we are, we actually run in, we, we become stable. There's a stability underneath our tension that exists. So as you clean out your tension, you soften it out, feels like you're getting softer, 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 but then eventually it consolidates and becomes this, this stability, this potency. It's a wonderful feeling, but we gotta polish out what's in the way of that. All right, and then bring that left foot back, side step. All right, we're always grounded, grounded. Never rolling the dice, hoping that we don't fall. We're always grounded. Now, put that right foot in front. Now, we're going to take one step. So, it's shift, and then this back foot being empty, step it. And then shift. 
and then we go backwards. But remember, backwards really is down. Once this front foot is empty, it's free to step. And then it's down. And this foot, empty. And then down, take a step, down, pause. Down, take a step, down. This one I love because, and, I, and the best word I can think of is casual, casual. So see if you can just casually just change the weight, take a nice casual step, change the weight, casual step. Make it so easy. It's just kind of falling off a log. You know, it's, it's just, uh. so that walking, this basic walking down the hallway, getting from your bed to your bathroom, getting from wherever is not this effort. It's just like, oh yeah, I remember. Easy. Now we add the challenge of front leg lift lower just to test. Shift, and now there's something on the ground we have to step over. Pick that foot up, step up and over and place it down, and then shift. Back leg flamingo, bend the knee, toe down, shift back. Front leg comes up, tuck, reach over, shift back. The down creates the freedom to go up. The down creates this freedom to come up and over without it disturbing your middle. The down creates this freedom, and your middle is just, again, floating. That's what's kind of cool about Tai Chi is you, over time, if you understand and practice these, you feel like you are floating inside your own matrix. There's a floating ease. If you've ever seen someone practice beautiful Tai Chi, it's like, whoa, there's something striking about it, and it's this capacity we have. Let's go level three, to float. Sort of hydraulic liquid matrix that we can step up and over here, that we can just float up, back, shift back, up, tuck, reach back, shift, get down to the earth. That's what allows the freedom of lift, Lower, down to the earth, allows us the freedom to go heel, knee, foot, down, all without disturbing, and then shift. And then the freedom of being down here allows this movement. <clears throat> Up, tuck, reach, shift. And let's switch sides, bring right foot back. Change the weight, side step, shift, get closer to this chair. Now put left foot in front. Let's do that casual. So it's just casual down to the earth, step loose, casual down. Casual, casual. So notice how you're moving forward in space without thinking about forward and back, primarily. Down, down, allows you to step. Down, allows you to step. Keeps you grounded, keeps you safe. It's the stability we're looking for is down. But initially, we're usually looking for it in grab, in hold, instead of in release. So it's a change of mindset. But it's also a return to natural, which is nice. Level two, lift, lower, shift. Now that back foot, step up and over something. Little step, shift. Then a the little flamingo, bend, toe down. Get down to the earth to allow the safe freedom to lift that foot, take a step back, and then get down to the earth. Allow you the freedom to lift. Down to the earth. Step up and over. Down to the earth. Flamingo. Down. Reverse. Down. Let's go level three. Use the chair as needed. Knee all the way up. So this is just maximum range without effort, if possible. So it's just loose. You go heel to butt, knee up, foot out. 
So of course, when I say without effort, there's some impetus required from our mind, right? Telling us, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do a particular thing. So there's that effort, but what we're trying to, to dissolve is the extra, the extra grabbing, the holding, the making it harder that everyone is doing, but with Parkinson's, you just can't afford that. You cannot afford anything other than perfect Tai Chi. And if you find it, and I've watched this with a lot of people that I'm working with privately and also in groups, I'm watching, it's available regardless of the Parkinson's. If you remember this trick, it's like, oh yeah, well, I can do this. This still works. Loose, free, light, nimble. It's like a trick. It's like almost a magic trick to some degree. All right. Bring the left foot back. And let's... Uh, so you guys stay where you are. Now make your way over to the left side of your space. So if you're set up like I described earlier, you should have, again, these two chairs. And now turn and face across. So you have a runway to take three, four, five, six steps in one direction. And you have your chairs there for safety. Level one, so empty your left foot, put it in free. Casual, just make it so casual to just go down to the earth, making sure you're down connected to the earth so that you can safely just casually step and then go down to the earth. Take a casual step and then down to the earth. And notice again, this soft and supple quality to free this foot up, right? When I'm shifting, I gotta be able to to move this leg through this range that I'm showing you here, right? That has to be free. If my leg is stiff, then I'm going to have a hard time. But if it's soft, I can just kind of flick it through, you know? And then let's go back. We shift back. This foot free, just kind of float it back. Shift. Careful going backwards, of course. But focus on down. So as long as you've got that one down, then the other is free to step. And then one down, the other is free. And even though we're going backwards, we're actually not going backwards. We're just going down. Forwards, casual. So maybe you speed it up a little bit. Or you just casually just kind of mosey, saunter across the room. And then again, going backwards, just kind of sauntering backwards. Easy. 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 Making sure before you try and step a foot that you've truly connected to the ground. And then last one, let's do level two, where we step over something and then shift and step over something that's in the way. Shift, step over. Shift, over. Over. And then reverse. Where again, making sure you're not falling into your back foot. You're finding the ground empty, then change. And then this front leg lifts up, tucks, and gets over something, find the floor. Shift. And then this foot comes up and tuck and reach back. Shift. Up, tuck, reach. Shift. Up, tuck, reach. Shift. All right. Now, Turn and face forward again. Take hands onto your sacrum and lower back. So let's find this little massage here, right where your tailbone comes up, kind of into the love handle area and the lumbar spine. Loosening that. And then turn your hands so the backs of the hands are on the body. Make, make fists. And you're going to use this little area of your knuckles right along the muscles of the back, up and down. Right along those muscles. Let's do that again. Turn your palms onto the body and rub down into the tailbone and love handle area. And then turn the hands, bring them close together and rub up and down. 
and release. So that's, again, the Ming Men, that's an area that tends to get tight, stuck, and we sort of grab or run and return. We want that flowing. So when you feel your back pain, go right to that little combo of rub, rub, right, and release. Now move over to the left side of your space again, if you're not there. And let's go down through the left leg, right foot empty, out, in, okay? Now, what I wanna to add to this that I've been adding to try to make an important point. So make your secret swords here. This is a little Tai Chi hand position. But, so the groin area, so we got genital area in the middle, and we got this inguinal crease on either side. And a lot of times this is always closed, it's stuck. And so even when we're moving sideways, I can get across the room and keep this area closed. And I might think I'm doing it right, correct? Right, this is all closed. But what we really want is the qua or groin area that can open and close. That's the healthy groin qua or leg hip relationship. So fingers touching those inguinal creases, note that with the legs together, they're both closed. Keep your weight in your left leg and step the right foot out without any body weight. The only way to accomplish that is to open the right groin area or qua, and then bring that leg back in and feel how it's now closed again. Open, close, open, and the weight is still here. This has no body weight in it, even if I place the whole foot in, out, in, out. So let's free up that gate, that space. Now, put that foot out there and leave it there. Close the right claw, your right's my left, but your right, open the left. Keep the foot where it is, just let the claw open, the groin area open. And now close the left, open the right. So now the weight's here and it's not here. And then close the right, open the left. Now the weight is here and it's not here. Change, change. If you move from here and from your middle, your central line doesn't lean like the Tower of Pizza, right? It's staying with that jong jong. And yet we have the freedom of moving in space quite a bit. Now, the next time you close the right with the left open and the left leg empty, now stay here and bring this left leg in, all the way in, right? Really make it clear, the feet even touching possibly, and then all the way out, right? Good space, and then in, out. And remember, the difference is I'm not keeping this closed and lumbering over there. I'm staying here and feeling this freedom. So you notice I can move this pretty fast without disturbing anything. And it's that empty light ching ling that allows for that. Now bring the left foot in, both claw closed. Change your weight to your left leg, right leg emptier. Change your weight to your right leg, left leg emptier. Change, same thing. Middle, jong jong, intact. And I'm freely moving from the, from the main men lumbar and the two groin areas loose, free, loose, free. Now, stay down through your left, right foot steps out by opening right quad, change the weight, closing right, opening left, bring the left in, change, right foot is now empty, steps without any weight, change, this now left is empty, bring it in, change and step, change and step, reverse, out, shift, in, shift, out, shift, in, shift, out, shift, in, shift.
Now we're going to do that same walking maneuver and we're just going to add uh, some of you, if not all of you, have been to the, the Monday class, or I'm sorry, the Friday class, the sort of advanced upper body work. So that is mostly this turning and sweeping work, the different combinations with the hands. So stay in your left leg. We're going to do the bear washes its paws as we sidewalk. So place the hands over to the side, turn from your navel a little bit to your left. Now step your right foot out. Shift to the right, turn to the right, wash your paw. Left leg now empty, steps in. Keep the leg in, feet close together. Shift into your left leg and turn. Hands sweep across, step out. Shift and turn, wash your paws. Left foot empty, step in. Shift and turn and wash your paw, step right foot out. Shift, turn, sweep, step in. Shift, turn, sweep, out. Shift, turn, sweep, in. Shift, turn, sweep, out. Shift, turn, sweep. Now, bring that left foot in and back out, so we're heading that way now. Wash your paws. Once the right leg is empty, just bring it in and then shift, turn, sweep. So now we're adding a more rich experience for the brain, the neural network, for the joints and tissue, right? We're not stick figures. We're round. We have spiraling body parts. We have rolling wheels and joints and floating spiraling parts and all of it can be controlled from our middle pivot let's go there and back adding now the circle so here the hands come up and over down under up and over Down under, up and over while you step, right? That step. Notice my feet are together as I finish this. Nice step. Now I'm doing that bear washing pause. Now I'm over here. I step in. The hands are coming up. I'm changing the weight into this left leg and turning the body. Then the right foot goes out. Shifting and turning the body. Now let's switch directions. So left foot out, we're going down under. As it rises up, bring that right foot in, turn, sweep across, step out, down under. As it's rising, bring that foot in, across, step out, down under. Rising, cross, step, floating, flying, round, beautiful shapes. This is just like a simple, this isn't even really like a very complicated move, yet you can feel what it's doing for the mechanics of the body. Let's go there and back one more time. Side walking while adding a double hand circle. Shift and turn and sweep, step. Shift and turn and sweep, step. Shift, turn, sweep, step. Switching direction. Shift, turn, sweep, the bear washing paws rising up and then washing across the top of that circle, step. Right. So often the practice of complex Tai Chi, people end up losing track because there's all these things to remember. Whereas as I've studied over the years and, and I'm bringing it to, the, to our Western mind, I've realized that one of the best ways to do it is really break it into its underlying mechanics and principles rather than getting too far off into 
29 move forms and 108 move forms and all that. Uh, so, so that's kind of what you just got an experience of the mechanics turning and rolling, the circular motions present, the changing and turning that makes our body feel like, again, what Tai Chi is supposed to uh, produce for us. So, okay, final uh, self massage thing. So, let's add to the one we did earlier hands together, rub the palms, then the qua, the groin area here. Because they say this is an area that energetically gets very, uh, it's kind of fragile and it can get stuck. And this is where hernias can occur and stuff. And so we want to make sure it's open, flowing, free. And then the front of the hips, these hip flexors, this bundle right up at the top, right here where the pelvis is here and the legs meet right there. Finding that inguinal, I mean, uh, that hip flexor crease. Then come around and do the one we did earlier. Tailbone up onto the lumbar, and then turn the hands and get the rest of that lumbar, the whole back. And then to clear the energy stagnation, we do this little flow. So turn your palms to face the buttocks, sit like we did earlier, sit, sweep the hands down the outside of the legs, around to the inside, come up the inside all the way to the navel, qua, hip flexors, and just do this little sacrum lumbar one, and then flow. And uh, one more. And this little thing that we're doing here, remember this. It's Again, it's not that complicated. Uh, use this when you're feeling a little bit stuck, you know? Just even if you don't have time for a whole practice, just do this little rub, 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 flow. Get that flow back. And then finally, just the, the chi reset in the upper body. Shoulder, turn that arm, come down the inside. So they organize yang channels on the outside, yin channels inside. And this promotes what, again, according to Chinese medicine, is the directionality we want for those channels. This way and this way. And then the other side, up turn down, turn up, turn. And close the practice. Wings, roll, fold over top, settle. Hands right at the navel, and then seal one, Thank you so much, everybody. The little Taoist hand position kind of creates the yin-yang symbol, right? So the harmonizing of yin and yang. One is a fist, one is an open palm, and together. All right. Thank you so much. Please unmute yourselves if you have any questions or comments.